Elon Musk's SpaceX just got one step closer to the first orbital test flight of Starship. For initial test flights, SpaceX will use 33 Raptor engines to power the Super Heavy first stage and 6 on the Starship upper stages. So for each test flight that either ends in the ocean, with a fiery landing, or with a vehicle that can't be reused, the company will lose out on 39 Raptor engines, which is a staggering amount of engines both in terms of cost and lost production time. But will Musk accept such waste? The answer is an obvious and resounding no. No short of ideas or technological innovations, Elon Musk is also very seriously considering using the Starship's launch tower to catch Super Heavy before landing on the ground. An interesting idea, but it still has to be realistic. And whether or not you take him at his word, it's certainly worth exploring his engineering masterpiece. Now, without any delays, let's get started on today's episode of Great SpaceX to learn more about Elon's genius solution to save all 33 engines. Named after the Mecha Godzilla character from the Godzilla movie franchise, SpaceX's Mechazilla launch tower is one of the most ambitious features of a spaceflight project already breaking new ground. The Starship is a fully reusable rocket capable of sending over 100 tons or 100 people into space at a time. The ship is designed to support all of SpaceX's current missions, while also paving the way for more ambitious plans like a base on the moon or a city on Mars. The underdevelopment vessel could become the tallest and most powerful rocket ever to fly. While it's already set to be an impressive visual sight, Mechazilla could make the scene look even more outstanding. But how exactly will the Mechazilla grabbing arms support a Mars-bound rocket? Launch towers for rockets are nothing new. NASA explains that the fixed service structure at the Kennedy Space Center's Launch Pad 39A, which is used for rockets like the SpaceX Falcon 9 and NASA's retired space shuttle, measures around 347 feet from the ground to the top of the lightning mast. It features three swing arms for access to a shuttle placed on the pad. It's ideal for emergency exits for astronauts. But SpaceX is thinking bigger with the Mechazilla. In December of 2020, Musk claimed that the firm planned to use the launch tower's arms to catch the Super Heavy booster as it returns to Earth. Some Musk fans have already created animations of their interpretations of how it might work. Musk gave further details about how it would work on August 30th of 2021 himself. The booster will likely use two pins for lifting and catching. Musk noted that maybe it's better to modify grid fins to take more load. The ship would sport something to flip out from the leeward side of the ship. Maybe it's part of forward flaps, but probably not. Tank treads on the arms will slide the booster out to line up with the orbital launch pad, ready to fly again. The plan marks a sharp departure from SpaceX's other rocket reuse efforts. For the semi-reusable Falcon 9, the first stage booster either returns to Earth on a land-based launch pad or an autonomous drone ship in the sea. The rocket fires its engines during descent to come to a stop on the pad. So why not just do that then? Because as Musk suggested on August 13th, using the tower to catch the booster and ship means that neither of them needs landing legs to support themselves as they return. The Starship will only require legs for missions that land on Mars or other planets until there is local infrastructure. Note that the Falcon 9 boosters used their legs to support themselves as they came in to land on those drone ships. On August 4th, Musk also suggested that the tower could move the rocket into position. On the 20th of January, Musk published the first official visualization of what SpaceX's plans to catch super heavy boosters might look like in real life. Based on the simulated telemetry shown in the visualization, Super Heavy's descent to the landing zone appears to be considerably gentler than the suicide burns that SpaceX routinely uses on Falcon. By decelerating, by decelerating as quickly as possible and making landing burns as short as possible, Falcon saves a considerable amount of propellant during recovery, which means extra propellant that, if otherwise required, would effectively increase Falcon's dry mass and decrease its payload to orbit. In the super heavy catch, Musk shared the booster actually appears to be landing, 
just on an incredibly small patch of steel on the tower's mechazilla arms instead of a concrete pad on the ground. Aside from a tiny bit of lateral motion, the arms appear motionless during the catch, making it more of a landing. Further, Super Heavy is shown decelerating rather slowly throughout the simulation and appears to hover for almost 10 seconds near the end. The challenge is a bit like if SpaceX for some reason made Falcon boosters land on two elevated ledges about as wide as car tires. That slow, cautious descent and even slower touchdown may be necessary because of how incredibly accurate Super Heavy has to be in order to land on a pair of hardpoints with inches of lateral margin for error, and maybe a few square feet of usable surface area. Aside from demanding accurate rotational control, even the slightest lateral deviation would cause the booster to topple off the pillars and, in the case of Super Heavy, fall about 100 feet onto concrete, where it would obviously explode. In the event of larger anomalies during a landing attempt, Starship or Super Heavy could accidentally impact the launch tower damaging or even outright destroying the skyscraper-sized structure. Ultimately, the immense risk posed by any catch attempt means that unless SpaceX has miraculously gotten the design of everything involved nearly perfect on its first try, the company will have to be extraordinarily cautious and expend a large number of ships and boosters to avoid rendering its only Starship launch tower unusable. At least to some extent, SpaceX likely knows this and Super Heavy would likely need to be in excellent health and perform perfectly during the ascent and boost back portions of its launch debut to be cleared for a catch attempt. Now, if the tower can catch the rocket and move it back into position on the launch pad, that could help SpaceX reuse rockets faster than we've ever seen before. The fastest turnaround time for a Falcon 9 booster from the previous flight to reflight is 21 days and 6 hours. In March of 2020, Musk said that he wanted Starship to be able to fly three times per day. If Musk wants to build a city on Mars by 2050, he might come to depend on that rapid turnaround time. In 2019, he estimated that the city would require around 1 million tons of cargo to reach self-sufficient status. If each ship carries 100 tons, that means SpaceX will need to make 10,000 flights over the next 30 years, or around 333 per year. Which is such an impressive number, but when will it be used for the first time? Probably soon, because SpaceX wants to attempt the Starship booster catch during the first orbital launch, and that flight is highly likely to happen next month. So let's wait and see. I'm just here twiddling my thumbs. And that's about it for today's episode. So thank you so so thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.